Greetings. We welcome all of you to uh, House Two House Discipleship Institute, and this is our evening terabyte. You know, some of us do need to uh, tear into the enemy and take a bite out of them to let them know that you're not folding, you're not bending, bowing, or burning in the process of the fiery furnace. The Father has granted you favor. The Father has called you by name. The Father has made you. You are his workmanship created in Yeshua HaMashiach. Therefore, you can't lose. You've got to understand that tonight is your night. Uh, wherever you're at, you may be in a morning zone, afternoon zone. So we want to welcome all of you, all those in Africa, London, uh, England, uh, California, Oregon, my family up there. I can't wait. We're going to be leaving Thursday, uh, flying out of California over to Oregon to uh participate in our Passover as a family, as the body uh, connected to the head. We become the Passover lamb when we understand the mysteries, the secret things, those things that are initiated to them that are called by name. Remember the clarion call went out 2,000 years ago. Many are called, few are chosen, and least endure till the end that shall be saved. Are you one of them? If you are, then you're on the right track. You're on the right journey. You're hearing the right voice. You're hearing the right trumpet sound. You are beginning to hear the prophetic word that the Hebrew language once again is going to be restored. The Hebrew name of our master and creator is going to be uh, once again brought into a household term. He will be once again reformed, transformed, and formed in and through you and I. What has happened is we lack knowledge. There is a dullness of hearing, hearing for the word of Yahuwah. There's a famine in the land family and you're part of it. If you haven't made any changes and start restoring his Hebrew name, if you haven't even began to search out the scripture to see what you've been taught, if it be so, and you just go and you don't even carry a Bible anymore because you got your phone and it has all the gadgets and gadgets there, but you know that you need to get back to the word that is written on parchment paper, and that way the Father can hold you, because what if this gadget here, and they say no more power, and they go ahead and just put a virus on this that eats everything out? You're not going to be happy with yourself if you didn't get it in your heart. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not miss the mark, Yahuwah. So I'm begging you, pleading with you, go back to the word. We're in perilous times. There's all kinds of stuff happening around. But you know what? I'm rejoicing because it says when the righteous are in the right place, they rejoice because it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. The light has come, arise and shine for the esteem of your father flows in and through you and is reaching mankind. So let's remember tonight is your terabyte, my terabyte, and I'm taking the word and I'm applying it. I'm letting it work in me and the word becoming flesh so that I'm a terror to the kingdom of darkness, a threat to the kingdom of darkness, and a revenger to the kingdom of light. We are spreading the kingdom. He said, the kingdom is at hand. And people were looking and they're wondering, but what do you mean? And he was pointing to himself. The kingdom of Yah is at hand. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And we're going to have to get really bold, family, because these are the hours and these are the times. We're preparing for uh, the, the Passover and many others are preparing for Easter. And that's a pagan goddess sorry to ruin your bunny hats and your rabbits and and the rest of the things that are happening but you know you put uh, 20 dollar bills in plastic eggs and then go hide them and have the kids find them that is a total embarrassment that's being rude to your heavenly father that's cutting him asunder that's knowing the truth and then like saying ah so I know the truth. It's okay. I like the Easter thing. I like the Easter thing. I, I, I even like the Christmas thing. You know, I buy a tree and dip uh, 
you know, colors and all the things that they do during the Easter, during the Christmas and Thanksgiving and New Year's. It's all, we got it all because we lack knowledge. In Hosea chapter uh, 4, verse 6, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people, he's talking about a remnant that he has bought with his blood of his son. He's talking to a remnant that has said, Yea and amen and said behold the lamb that takes away the sin of the world and that's who I'm speaking to I'm speaking to you I'm speaking to your divine hallelujah your divine DNA that's deep inside of your vortex down deep in the heart of who you are your lev I'm speaking to you tonight and we're going to start right now with one of the first words that we haven't uh, even attempted to see if it would be so the word amen the word amen is not what you think hallelujah and i'm going to read you right now here from and then you can go to your collegiate uh, dictionaries you can go to google and you can get the answers you can get the definitions but here uh the word a m e n is been replaced by the roman <laughs> this word is been replaced by the roman catholic doctrines incorporating the Egyptian god Aman Ra, Aman Ra, Aman Ra, and it's spelled A-M-U-N slash R-A. It replaced the Hebrew word, Hebrew, H-543, Amin, A-M-E-I-N, which means to foster the word of Yahuwah. To foster the word of Yahuwah. Now there's deeper meanings. I'm trying to keep it simple because I'm trying to reach you that are listening and coming out of the system. Revelations come out of her, my people. My people are, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. See, reading the Bible does not mean you're getting the rightful knowledge. Because if you read the King James authorized canonized version, it's been changed to alter the way you think. When you say amen, you're not saying amen, you're saying Amon Ra. You're speaking about a pagan goddess, a pagan deity, a pagan, an Egyptian one for that matter. Oh boy. So here again, there's a, a lack of knowledge in the family. Uh, in the book of Chronicles, it talks about Issachar being a tribe that knows what Israel ought to do. You and I need to begin to be apprehended by the Ruach Kadosh and begin to speak and begin to search out a matter concerning who we are in Him so that your Heavenly Father once again can be restored and bring, yep, theocratic order, Yah's order to the planet. We've been so lied to, it's ridiculous. But I like the verse here in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Let me, I mean, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Let me read it to you. Which none of the princesses of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified Yahuwah of our high esteem. Verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart the lev of man, the things which Yah has prepared for them that ahava him. Now listen, family, that's showing me that there is something that's going on inside you that's trying to reveal itself to you. you the pressure of your human efforts is crushing the seed inside you to help germinate what you've been searching for. Let me read the next verse so you can hear it and see it for yourself. Verse 10. But Yah has revealed them unto us. Say us. us. See, you're part of the us group. In uh, verse 10. Unto us by his Ruach. For the Ruach searches all things, yea, the deep things of Yah. Now, what's interesting, you'll get a lot of uh, men and a lot of women and you'll get a whole lot of charismatic and you'll get a whole lot of charisma 
tall uh, preachers that use Jesus and then talk about the feast that use God, use Lord and talk about the feast. And I'm just trying to get us back to the original Paleo Pictorial. So there, those names weren't even used because those were given to us after the Babylonian era. After uh, the children of Yah went into exile, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he vowed and made it a point to have them brainwashed to the point they forgot their original language, their paleo and pictorial lettering, which was picture writing, picture understand. Real easy, a child would have known it. And so here we are, we got uh, slashes and dashes and and then I was going to get into the Rudolph the reindeer with the slashes and dashes. and But I'll just uh, leave that where it's at and let you figure it out. But listen closely though. We need to get back. If we are going to interpret what he is saying. Zephaniah 3 and 9. If you want to turn there. It's just a few pages back from Matthews. Uh, and you'll, get, you'll find it right there in your scripture. Uh, if you follow with me. Zephaniah. Hallelujah. Three and nine, I can quote it, but I want you to see it because this is how powerful we need to have it, all right? For then will I turn, listen closely, for then will I turn to the people of pure language. Then when? Then when they repent, Toshiva, for the infractions, the injustice, the mockery, yeah, the mockery, that's what I said, the mockery of uh, the most wonderful, most beautiful, most amazing, passionate name, Yahuwah. yod Hey wah Just feel that, yod Hey wah Yahuwah, and his son, Yahshua. And let's not forget the Ruach Kadosh. They are echad, they're one. And he's saying to you and I, for then will I turn to the people of pure language that they may all call upon my name. And the name, see how it, King James, look at, they had it. Call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. It's not the Lord. His name was Yahuwah. And if you didn't want to use Yahuwah, you can use yod heh wah or Yah. Because the poetic name of Yah and Yah is the Father and the Son, Yahuwah, Yahshua. See, and these are the things that I'm trying to point out to us because we're in preparation for Sabbath. I'm going to join up with my family that has enough insight, Salem. Yes. Uh, that has enough insight, and they're in Salem that is part of Jerusalem. Why? Because we're going to the house of praise and the house of bread. The father said, I am the lamb. And he said, prepare a lamb to Moses, who was the mediator of the law. He didn't have a way out. He had to prepare a lamb. But you and I are the way out for mankind in this era that we're living in, in this dispensation that we're living in. And why can I say that? Because Yahshua HaMashiach abides in you. And if he abides in you, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 says, the Father is hidden in the Son and the Son is in you. So now the Father's in you, the Son is in you, and you know without a shadow of a doubt that that means the Spirit, the Ruach Kadosh has to be in you. And they are Echad. That's the Hebrew term for one. And then now the next verse, that, the next word that I wanted uh, to share that we need some more insight on because this is getting uh, pretty silly that we don't search the scriptures, that we don't challenge ourselves, that we just kind of, hey, oh, hum, you know, we hum ourselves through the line. Ooh, and you almost get into the new age humming uh, realm. And we got to we gotta understand these things. We got to come back to this, uh, the word Christian. Are you a Christian? Are you a son? Are you a servant? The word Christian, Christianos, it's a Latin Greek, created in the Greek Orthodox Catholical School of Alexandria in 190 A.D., then the Roman Emperor Constantine adapted it in 310 to 326 AD. He replaced it. Listen to this. He replaced Messianic 
But before 310 AD, believers were called in Greek Nazarenes in Hebrews 5139. Hebrews 5139. Nazar. We were called Nazarenes and Nazar. Okay? Not Cristiano. See, it even sounds flavory. Cristiano. Because I have I'm Spanish. I'm a Safari. Yeah. Ah, Hebreo. Safari Hebreo. What is that? A Sephardic Hebrew. And, or, <laughs> anyway, you just keep listening. You hit the subscribe button and we'll get back with you. We're going to have more insight. I think it's time, uh, before, be, you know, instead of being ignorant and just kind of uh, winking an eye to it. Remember what the Father said in the book of Acts? I winked at your ignorance, but now I command you to repent. He's asking us to come back into a true repentance. That's in the scripture, in the Bret Harashah, the New Testament, some of us call it. It's not even a New Testament because you need to, a testator to die to be a testament. But ours is living. He's alive. And he's challenging you and I this hour. Until we see each other again, shalom.